guys, we have a problem. Uh, actually, I think I definitely have a problem. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not trying to say that Royal Enfield's hotly anticipated interceptor is the problem. No, and yes, it is the 650cc twin-cylinder Royal Enfield that we've all been waiting for. The problem is the questions that you want answered. Well, not all of them, one in particular. And I've got a whole list of questions that you asked us to answer. So let's tackle them one by one, starting with the easy ones first. First up, how much will it cost? Under two and a half lakh rupees ex showroom or about less than three lakh rupees on road for this 650cc twin cylinder Royal Enfield. That's incredible value. You're excited, aren't you? But how has Royal Enfield managed to pull this off? Well, by making some crucial decisions. For instance, no upside down forks at the front. The engine is air and oil cooled. It isn't liquid cooled, which would have made it heavier and more expensive. And of course, that isn't a hugely powerful engine. It's got 47 horsepower. It could have done with more, but that would have made it, you know, more expensive to make as well. And when you look at the suspension, there's no mono shock. But you look at what you've got for this price, you've still got a solid package. I love the chrome bits like the handlebar with the brace in the middle. You look at that solid dual cradle frame going down that's holding it all together. The fantastic finish for the exhaust or the shocks. And of course, the fact that you've got spoke alloy rims, Pirelli Phantom Sport Comp tires, you've got pretty good kit on offer here. That price tag might make you wonder, is the Interceptor solid enough? Let's find out. You know, it does look well finished. You look at that handlebar with that brace, which feels solid, then there's this tank which looks so well painted. And you know what? It feels solid. I mean, it feels like it's well put together, better than anything we've seen in the past. And I know we said this for the Himalayan as well when we first rode it, but this feels whole, several rungs better than what we experienced on the Himalayan. Here we really have nothing to nitpick about. This feels like an all new RE in terms of expectation setting. Okay, so on some fronts, it's not like what we've come to expect from Aris, which is great. But on some fronts, we want it to be like an Ari. What I mean is, does it still have the thumb? Well, no, but there is a new beat in town and from those stock exhausts, what you get is a mellow rumble. One that you'll appreciate even at the end of a 500 kilometer ride. But I can tell you that most RE enthusiasts would love a bit more volume. What's next? What's next? Ha! Kitna teti hai. But Royal Enfield, so kitna vibrate karti hai. Chaika kap hai kya? Chaika kap. Okay. Now we know. Is this a Royal Enfield? <laughs> it's hard to believe, right? I wouldn't have expected to stay there for anything above 2000 RPM. But it does. And it surprises you on the road as well. 100 kilometers an hour, 6 gear, 4000 RPM. Smooth. Butter smooth. And even if you go faster, like you go into higher RPMs to 7500 RPM, whereas the limiter cuts in, even over there, you'll get barely anything more than a thrum at the bars or through the seat. That's it. So if you want to really pin this open on a highway, you could do that as well and actually make quick, effortless progress. Is this a Royal Enfield I'm talking about? Vibrator kis ko log? And of course, the other question. Ladakh to le ja payenge na? Royal Enfield. 
Well, when you start off from Delhi and head to Chandigarh, you'll really enjoy that engine because you've got so much torque and it is smooth. So, which means you can cruise comfortably. 100 feels nice and easy and 120, that's pretty much fun as well. And you also get a nice bump in torque around the 3000 RPM mark, which means overtaking, well, that's not a bother either. And if you really want to make a quick pass, tap down one gear, that's about all you need. And a closed loop fuel injection system means that it won't splutter on its way up to Tanglangla. Seating position, nice, upright, roomy. It is comfy. What will be painful though is the seat. It's too soft, which means you'll start feeling the rails underneath pretty soon. And that's something that will also apply to your pillion. And whether you're carrying a pillion or luggage, do remember to up the preload on the rear shocks because the suspension is set on the softer side, which is great for everyday use for a single rider. But for longer rides, do remember to make it a little bit stiffer. Otherwise, you'll end up feeling a lot of shocks from poor road surfaces. And on those surfaces, you will feel that this gets a little bit bouncy. That aside, you look at the seat, it's slim, long, so you can pack in a lot of luggage. And there's that tank, which actually looks short and broad. And you think that would really hold a lot of fuel, but it gets 13.7 liters. And when you combine that with its fuel efficiency on the highway of about 25 or so, you get a range of over 300 kilometers, well over 300. But if you want to go from Tandi to Leh, you know what you're going to have to do, right? What I'm saying is, just to be safe, carry some backup. Now these 18 inch spoked alloy wheels look beautiful and will give you that classic retro feel when you're out there traveling distances. But keep one thing in mind, while the tires are of the tubeless type, on this rim, you'll have to run it with a tube. Which means in case you get a puncture, a puncture wala had better be close by. But if you're worried about ground clearance for those river crossings, don't be. Because the Interceptor has 174 millimeters of ground clearance. That's 40 millimeters more than a classic 350. Though, chale Ladakh. I know some of you are going to say, forget about Ladakh. What about Lokarnola? Yeah, what's it going to be like in the city? And just to be fair, we didn't go to Ladakh or Lokarnola. The Interceptor cruises on the highway and it can do the same in the city too. That's because it's got so much torque right from 1500 RPM that spending the entire day in third or fourth gear, 30, 40 kilometers an hour, really isn't a hassle. And then the six-speed gearbox is slick, the clutch is light, and you just roll on the gas in third or fourth and it just marches ahead smartly. It's not like super quick, but it is more than you would have expected from something that seems like such a simple engine as such. And considering it's an air-cooled engine, you might have been worried about heat. But in our experience in the city, yes, it got hot. But did it cook our thighs? No, it did not. And that isn't everything either because there's the weight to think about. This, in the statement as given by Royal Enfield, weighs 202 kilograms, but that's without fuel. So we estimate this to be about 210 kilograms, which is about 18 kilos more than a Thunderbird 350. That is a bit, and you do feel some of it while commuting in the city. It isn't as much as you'd expect, but you do feel the weight at the bars when you steer it around. The really sharp steering geometry suddenly lightens the load at the bars, but it can't make all that weight disappear. When you get riding, it's not so apparent. It's especially when you're parking or moving it around in parking spots that you'll feel the weight quite apparently. There's one thing I'd like to warn you about, especially at low speeds and paddling around in the city, take care of the foot pegs. Because of the large engine, they have been pushed outwards. And in case of emergencies, when you want to get a foot down, you tend to fumble with them. That is, until you get used to them. So yeah, keep that in mind. And as for shorties, a seat height of 804 millimeters isn't all that much. And it does make it that much easier to manage the weight, even when you're paddling at low speeds. So it can tour, it can commute, as you would have expected, but can it keep up with your fast friends? <coughs> yeah, sorry.
Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this. The Interceptor, it's quick. In a straight line from 0 to 100, it will run really close with the KTM 390 Duke. So yes, this bike has pace. And even if you open up in gear and accelerate and go head to head with something like a KTM 390 Duke, which is known for being great value for money and really potent in terms of performance, the Interceptor, it might run a little bit behind, but it can hold its own. And it doesn't just stop over there. In terms of braking performance, it stops shorter than a 390 Duke and on par with something like a Kawasaki Vulcan S. So that is impressive performance from those floating 320mm Brembos up front and those Pirelli tyres that it's got. However, there's one thing I'd like to point out and that's the ABS on looser surfaces doesn't feel very consistent. The braking could have felt more confidence inspiring on that front. But if you just chuck it around corners, nice sweepers, you'll find that it flows really nicely. It has a lot of confidence. But if you really start hustling it, that's when it starts feeling a little bit nervous. But it won't make you feel nervous. That is a definite upside. It'll just let you get a hint that you should probably back off now. Let me say this loud and clear. The braking power on the Interceptor is phenomenal. Check out these numbers. Even if it is stopping one meter earlier, it is commendable because the RE is heavier than these bikes. And it continues to wow. Let me explain. The ultra sharp rake angle for the steering and the short trail are responsible for a somewhat fidgety steering, which can also catch ruts or undulations. Also, the sidewall of the Pirelli at the rear squishes a bit and therefore it does what it does. Treading over wet roads, I would recommend taking some care, especially at first. And on a side note, when you hug the tank hard, it will dig into your thighs. And that's all. Makes me wonder what the Continental GT will be like. Well, the Interceptor is doing many things well and taking Royal Enfield into a whole new level. And actually, this is something we've never done before as well. So, yeah, it's going well. But what could Royal Enfield have done better on the Interceptor? Bear with us, guys. We're bringing you the answers. The day is turned into night. But here's the answer for this question. And that is, yes, it could have done with a little bit more pizzazz. For instance, the headlamp is that old-school prismatic cover for the lamp. It does its job well, it illuminates the road well, it's got great throw, but it just looks old. And then there's that instrument cluster. It looks too simple for a bike that's looking to take the Royal Enfield Rider to a new level of experiences, a whole new level of richness. That doesn't quite cut it. In the interest of being classical, some things have taken a hit. Conveniences like a gear position indicator, mirrors that actually show you what's behind you are necessities for me today. Well, we are really close to the question that I'd love to avoid, but before we get there, this question is what you want answered. Should you buy an Interceptor 650? I'm going to answer that a little bit differently by trying to highlight why you shouldn't buy an RE Interceptor. And I know we're kind of in the twilight zone, but this is for real. This motorcycle, it's kind of hard to fault. It does so many things and does them so well that you'd end up reaching out for the keys of the Interceptor way more than you originally expected. Yes, I did think it was going to play to my heart a bit more, but it's actually playing more to this. And when you factor in the price, this ends up seeming like a versatile, sensible package that's really hard to resist. The Interceptor's charm will creep up on you. It's a motorcycle with a lot of maturity. And if you are a similar kind of rider, you know what to do. And finally, the question that I would have loved to dodge. Should you buy one now, the first lot? Well, when we first rode the Himalayan media bikes, we were hugely impressed. And we stood up and vouched for it. And then you know what happened. And this time around with the Interceptor, the feeling's pretty much the same, but on a whole different level. This motorcycle really feels 
very impressive, very well built, and so I would love to stand up for it. But this time around, I'm gonna just hold back for now. And here's a bonus question, and it's for you, you couch potatoes. Get those fingers moving and punch in some comments below. Let us know what you thought of the Interceptor 650 from Royal Enfield. Did it excite you? If yes, tell us why. If not, can we drop a thought in your head? What do you think about a Himalayan 650? Does that excite you? Well, let us know in the comments. And while we wait for that to turn into reality, there's something else that's already here, and that's the Interceptor sibling, the Continental GT650. We'll be riding that soon, and we'll bring you a review of that here on Zig Wheels. So stay tuned.